Do you remember Adobe Flash? Judging by my audience demographics, it's incredibly likely most of you grew up during the golden age of Flash. In 2021, Flash was left for dead by Adobe. Destroy all childhood memories. That's my official instructions. See what I did there? Those are the videos about zombie games. The lack of support and active attempts by Microsoft to stop people from using Flash led to many animations and games unviewable and unplayable. Oh, this is not happening. Anyone here? This is not happening. This is not happening. Aren't they supposed to be saving our asses? Looks like there's been a change of plans. This personally didn't affect me for a while, because I grew out of Flash when I got a PC that could start running more complex and demanding games. But recently, the memory of one of the more influential and interesting games from my childhood brought me back to Flash, which, at the time, didn't really work due to Microsoft. But the Newgrounds player recently got an update that completely bypassed these issues. Anyways, as a young cat boy, I was obsessed with all things zombies. And don't tell anyone, but I still kind of am. So, growing up in the 2010s was a goldmine for zombie media, especially with games like DayZ, Dying Light, State of Decay. But, some time ago, I saw a trailer for an amazing looking game called Pacific Drive. It kind of looks like Stalker mixed with The Long Drive, or Jalopy. Anyways, someone in the comments said it looked like a driving roguelike, which reminded of my favorite driving roguelite, Road of the Dead. Before I continue, I want to make some honorable mentions of uh, zombie flash games I played as a kid. Uh, particularly, uh, fuck, what is it? The Last Stand. They ju they actually just fucking released a, uh, a standalone 3D game on Steam recently. Boxhead and Earn to Die. Uh, the entire SAS zombie assault series after like, you know, two, I think. Oh yeah, and the fucking the Dead Zed games. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. In 2010, Evil Dog uploaded a Flash game onto Newgrounds called Road of the Dead. The first game in the Saga of the Dead, Road of the Dead takes place in Evans City when a zombie outbreak happens. The saga does have a greater story to it, but seeing as most of it was created after the first Road of the Dead was released, not everything matches up between games. The timeline is really hard to decipher here, so I'll try and make sense of it. I'm working off what the game gives me, and the wiki. Which, yes, there is a wiki for this game. <laughs> Believe me, it's fucking really, really not that great. <laughs> the S14 virus is created inside an underground facility, quickly followed by the S15 virus, with the former being a bioweapon, and the latter a mood control virus. The undead subjects resulting from the bioweapon escape when someone gets bitten and kickstarts an outbreak inside the facility. The undead overrun the facility and eventually escape and find their way into Evans City. A man is bitten and rushed to the hospital, where it becomes overwhelmed with the dead by the end of Day 2. On Day 4, the CDC moves into Evans City and they begin to set up quarantine zones. On Day 5, news channels are forced off the air as the military begins to move in and set up defenses and checkpoints. By Day 6, people begin to attempt to escape the city and riots break out as panic spreads. On day 7, the military begins to shoot any civilians approaching the checkpoints on site. Zombies begin to grow in far more numbers than people. The Evans City Command Post and Central Communications Checkpoint is overwhelmed. A high security broadcast radio is stolen and communication starts to break down as the military is overrun and thrown into disarray. This is roughly where Road of the Dead begins, with our protagonist, John Creaseman, working in his garage. This is an emergency alert system broadcast. This is not a test. Hello, citizen. Due to unforeseen and unexplained events, the city has been quarantined. Please stay home. Lock all your doors and windows. Stay out of sight till further notice. Repeat, 
it is crucial that you stay in your home and out of sight. Martial law is now in effect, and anyone trying to exit the city will be shot on sight. This is not an exercise. Stay home till further notice. This is bad. This is not an isolated cave. John makes the snap decision to get the hell out of the city instead of following the emergency broadcast instructions. For the base, Sector C was already overwhelmed. What do you want us to do? The freaking dead and still walking, goddammit! Get a hold of yourself. We're trained to handle anything. So stick to the job. Shit, I'm not staying here. This is the garage, where you can upgrade your vehicle and skills using road points gained from each run. The gameplay loop here is actually really fucking good, and I promise this is a game you will absolutely want to play even after watching this video the whole way through. There are four game modes in Road of the Dead. The Great Escape and Highway to Hell are both the same campaign mode. The latter is just the hardcore mode. Let's talk about the extra game modes first. Police State is a survival mode of sorts. You try to make it as far as possible without dying. This mode is tied to a new Grounds leaderboard, which means that you can compete with a bunch of other players from over the years, or even try to one-up me, which admittedly should not be that hard. Police State also has an achievement tied to it. The last challenge mode is called Dead on Time. Same premise as Police State, however, this time you only have 30 seconds before you blow up. Each zombie adds 2 or 3 seconds to this timer, however, and it is just zombies. Soldier kills don't count. Oh, and civilians give you negative 10 seconds. There are also two achievements tied to Dead on Time. The same as Police State, reach 10 kilometers, and also reaching 45 seconds on your timer. The mechanics of Road of the Dead are simple, but trust me, the game's challenge is incredibly engaging. W accelerates, A and D moves you left and right, and spacebar lets you use your handbrake to increase turning mobility. You can use your windshield wipers with R to wipe the blood from various zombies, soldiers, and pedestrians off of your vision, and the windshield can be punched out with F, if you really want to do that. The same button will also use your gun when you unlock it. The detail in this game is astounding, and if you know anything about me, it's usually the little details that I fall in love with when it comes to games. The small touches that you could just cut out of the game, but in the long run they all add up and make the experience so much better and more interesting. With things like sparks grinding on the sidewalls, knocking off your mirrors in the process, the gear shifting when you speed up or slow down. The fact that almost all objects that is in a vehicle can be hit with unique animations for some of them. Carpet bombings and explosives can kill zombies, civilians, and even soldiers. Or that in the start of the game, when you're inside the city, there's just a gray fog that stretches out into the city. But as you get near the end of the game, you can see a large mountain begin to get closer. Not to mention the number of unique voice lines for John, even with unique lines for killing civilians. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's gotta hurt. Open your freaking eyes. Get out of the damn way. Get off my hood. A freaking helicopter. No way. I'm not stopping for these chumps. You think you're gonna get me, huh? Like, this is a fucking Flash game. Flash. The software that's been used to make primarily 2D animations and relatively simple 2D games has been utilized to create a 3D, randomly generated roguelite. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, this game randomly generates the highway out of a number of different tile sets and vehicle types. Once again, this is fucking Flash. This is probably one of the most ambitious Flash games ever made. Oh shush, we'll get to you later. The story mode uses a checkpoint system to track your progress on the highway, and in a clever usage of ludonarrative sy synchronicity, the checkpoints are always preceded by military checkpoints, making each segment's finale a test of your skill and upgrades due to the ever-increasing amount of soldiers and defenses. 
Some of the best parts of this game are when the random generation hits just right and you end up weaving your way through the highway and carving a path through wrecks, mutants, and carpet bombings. At the start of Road of the Dead, John makes the decision to defy the quarantine order set out by the army, in which his escape is almost immediately noticed by the army. Checkpoint to base! We have a moving vehicle headed our way! Neutralize the vehicle. The driver could be infected or even dead for all we know. Roger that. The National Guard is clearly not prepared for the situation, which is especially clear with line delivery. You don't let in the base! Brighton Bridge is completely overrun! We need a new fallback position, now! Uh, set up the fence at the Chinatown Plaza. Sir, we just came from there. Oh, God damn it. Just move north. Just move freaking north. <laughs> yes, sir. sir. Actually, the line delivery is consistently good in both Road of the Dead games. More on that later, though. Eventually, after sending most of their soldiers to their doom with terrible orders, General Sherman shows up to take control, finally giving the rest of the surviving units some consistent orders. You won't stop me. Attention all troops. This is General Sherman. I am taking command of this operation. We're facing an enemy like we've never seen before. But keep your heads cool, and we're gonna get through. Now follow my orders carefully. All ground personnel are to converge to a defensive line along the Aichi River. Our backs to the water will meet a final stand in one single direction. We also have reports that some zombies have mutated. Be aware they are very strong and should be avoided at all costs. This is also where the mutants show up. Mutants have 20 times the strength of any normal zombies, able to withstand multiple head-on collisions with objects and latching onto your vehicle regardless of speed. Get off my car, jackass! Yeah! Checkpoint nice. in the face! We have the highway target approaching! What are your orders? Let him through! Sir? Let him through! General Sherman tells the next checkpoint to let you through, since... I have a surprise. But I guess they somehow didn't get the memo because I swear this is the fucking hardest checkpoint to get through in the game. The military eventually gets so fed up with John's escape attempt that they start throwing everything after him. As F-16 bombers begin to bomb lanes of the highway. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to mention that there's a helicopter, Hellfire 26, that shows up very frequently to try and blow up your car and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm pretty sure this is what Sherman's surprise was. And actually, this is a prime example of why the military in Road of the Dead fail to contain anything. We're holding, but damn, there's a lot of... Hold on. There's a lot of... The chain of command is in shambles, and the amount of resources they expend trying to stop one car is so numerous that their defense against the undead starts to fall apart. Damn. Checkpoint 7 to base! Target has gone beyond our checkpoint, but now we're overrun by zombies! We're moving out! Fall back to the Ayatsha River with the other units, now! Yes, sir! General Sherman, air support. Head over to Highway 65 for a carpet bombing on the target's location. Roger that. And to be fair, it wasn't that great before John got on the highway. Most of the military has started evacuating by this point. Sir, we're at the Ayachi River. There are literally millions of Zed heads slowly coming our way. But we're holding out for now. I see the transports coming. No position. Don't start evacuating until all the transports have landed. We'll need a synchronized retreat. Yes, sir! And you no longer see soldiers right before the final checkpoint, which was clearly overrun ages ago. Sherman, the Phantom Eagle. We have the president's approval. You are go for the drop. I repeat, you are go for the drop. Affirmative. Nuclear head armed, ready to drop. Heading to target, over. Sir, all transports are on ground. We're evacuating the river bank. Roger that. Do it fast. We're pulling out now. General Sherman gives the order for Phantom Eagle to drop a nuke, which is something that can be heard foreshadowed in the garage. Base to Phantom Eagle. Is the load ready and hot for a drop? Phantom Eagle to base. Affirmative. Circling the city, awaiting the order. Let's 
Let's pray we don't need to give this order. Over. And honestly, this final stretch is just so fucking good, as you get one minute of dialogue before it all cuts out, and it's just you, the road, and imminent destruction. Phantom Eagle to base, approaching the drop zone. Roger that. Unit 16 to base. We're currently holed up with a shopping mall. Can we get a transport out of here? Unit 16, your transport will be there in five minutes. Just keep those people safe until they... Sir, there's a lot of civilian and personnel on ground in the city. We can't do this. We can, and we are gonna do this. If this virus, or whatever it is, spreads, we could lose the whole country. The entire world. They will be a fair sacrifice. Over. Checkpoint down to base. We missed our transport and are heading to the Yuyachi River on foot. We'll be there in about ten minutes. Good man. You make me proud. Carry on. Phantom Eagle to base. Target in sight. God forgive us. What you think you're gonna get me, huh? Phantom Eagle to base. The drop is... Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Detonation confirmed. What's the status on the undead activity? Radiations are still too high, sir. Status ETA, 10 seconds. Let's pray to whoever's still up there that we did the right thing. No! Sir, we see a lot of undead movement. Shit! It didn't work! It didn't work! We failed, sir. Completing the Great Escape unlocks Hard Mode, Highway to Hell, which is ultimately both frustrating and incredible. The number of cars, zombies, and traps that spawn on Hardcore is roughly two to four times as much as normal. The amount of chaos that this mode breeds is delicious. But I have something to reveal to you. I lied. At the start of this video, I said that Road of the Dead starts on day seven, but that is a lie. <laughs> See, the cutscene from the start of the game is really taking place on day 5 or 6, I'm unsure really, but I'm gonna go with day 5. Which means that inside the garage, John had two days to modify his car for The Great Escape. And only on day 7, when things were at their breaking point, did he actually make his escape attempt. In fact, all of his deaths are just John making the most of his foresight as he comments on his death each time, and how he could best prepare to deal with it. With the military involved, I better be prepared. The military will do everything they can to stop me. I must be better prepared. Encourage strategy. They're going to have choppers. I'll need to dodge them or destroy them. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Just another tiny detail that I love about this game. Anyways, I've played Road of the Dead 1 more than five times for this video now, and I can safely say that it is probably one of my favorite games ever made. It's just such a solid experience. Go fucking play it, like now, or after this video. Seriously, you won't regret it. Alright, I'm going to touch on these because I just want to cover all my bases. Lab of the Dead is a mobile game, and this is where most of the lore, as discussed in the intro, is revealed. You play from the perspective of Dr. Alan C. Tyler, John Creaseman's brother, who has been escorted by a squad of soldiers to a bunker complex somewhere in the desert, where four days after the outbreak in Evans City, Alan begins to research the infected. As Alan continues to dig deeper into the facility, it becomes obvious that this is the facility where the virus was created. 
Hell, there's an entire holding area full of zombies. For some reason. The soldiers guarding Alan get increasingly more fed up with the lack of results and the seeming pointlessness of his research. After three months of research and an abuse of limited resources, Captain Woods, leader of the team protecting Alan, cuts his research off and tells him to leave the facility to fend for himself. Instead of doing that, Sigma male Alan C. Tyler decides to kill all of the soldiers in Bravo Company via lethal injection while they sleep. Alan becomes obsessed with his specimen, and uses the corpses of the soldiers for his research, but soon comes to regret it when his research stagnates. Alan decides to leave the facility because there's nothing more he can do there. The next game Alan stars in is Range of the Dead, except I can't get any footage for it, because the Unity web player just isn't working for some reason. A bummer, but it's whatever, because Range of the Dead isn't all that interesting. It's mostly a shooting gallery with some slight forwarding of Alan's plotline. I need a break. Alright, I should be good enough with this rifle to kill any zombie at an acceptable distance. Got about a hundred bullets left. Rations for a couple days, maybe three. If I go now, I should get to- Huh? Military helicopter. It's going towards Sanoya. No. A little more to the west. Wherever it's going, there must be survivors. A military base, maybe. I'm not alone. Gotta find these people. Lab and Range of the Dead are both pretty boring games. I wouldn't recommend them even if I wanted to. But I wanted to get them out of the way now so that I could finish off this video with by far the best entry in this saga to date. Road of the Dead 2. Oh man, where do I begin with this? I guess at the start. Road of the Dead 2 is another Flash game, obviously the successor to the first game. It features a lot of neat twists on Road of the Dead's already good gameplay loop. So, to start off with, there isn't just one protagonist, but two this time. Cochetta Solomon and Diane Roseworth. Both soldiers trapped inside Evans City during the manifestation of Murphy and his law. Diane loses her entire squad when her Humvee is flipped over, and the undead begin to devour the survivors. My best guess is that someone inside the vehicle was infected and turned mid-drive. Possibly even the driver. Diane managed to get out of the Humvee, either thrown from it in the crash or crawled out before the zombies could get her. Out of the frying pan and into the fire, she's already being attacked by a brute. Barely able to defend herself, she turns around to face even more undead when... Come on, let's go! Move it! Road of the Dead was all about speed and high-octane strategizing, but Road of the Dead 2 is very different to say the least. Road of the Dead 2 has an ever-increasing difficulty curve, with some spikes here and there due to how different area tiles are designed. Road of the Dead 2 features a much slower-paced gameplay loop, as it's designed to allow for rapid stopping for repairs, upgrades, picking up ammo, rescuing civilians, etc. Road of the Dead 2 was also designed to be beaten in a single life, unlike the previous entry. I would also like to note that just because Road of the Dead 2 has a slower paced gameplay loop does not mean that it is any less intense than Road of the Dead 1. In fact, the intensity has been turned up tenfold, for reasons that'll be stated later. 
In fact, the Highway to Hell equivalent can only be beaten deathless. Also, it's called Hardcore Mode this time. How lazy, 0 out of 10. The sequel also features way more upgrades. Not all of them are very useful or even worth it, but it's more content, so I'm not really complaining. One thing you may notice is that there is a gun on the screen now. I wish the crosshair wasn't so obnoxiously big, though. This is because both protagonists have their own set of weapons, with their own unique stats that can be upgraded with RP and prolonged usage. This is due to the increased number of undead in the sequel, and combined with the fact that a Humvee is a lot slower than a Mustang, this means you're going to be dealing with a lot more grappling zombies this time, which is made even more intense due to the fact that two zombies can grapple the car at once. New zombies have also been added, Brute Zombies take a lot more punishment to put down the normal Zeds. Female variants of the Brutes slash Ravagers have been added. I'm still not sure where they fall on the strength scale. Undead Soldiers have been added. Oh, and for some reason they decided not to use any of the incredibly unique zombie sprites from Lab of the Dead, despite there being the most variety in there. And Lord knows that Road of the Dead 2 could have used that. With the amount of Zeds littering the streets here, it would have been nice to see some variety. Instead, it's the same few sprites shambling around. Then again, Flash. On top of all the complexity and the complete insanity that is the number of cars, zombies, and carpet bombings, and other shit on the road, the dozen or so more zombies could definitely push the game over the edge performance-wise. Hell, it's already teetering considering the number of times it's crashed on these areas they just fucking came from. Uh-oh. The game oh. fucking... Oh what? <laughs> what? Are you shitting me? Oh, I'm gonna kill my- I think I fixed this by upping the Newgrounds player's priority in Task Manager, making certain challenge mode achievements and hardcore mode possible. But I'm not sure. Regardless, I've had to play Road of the Dead 2 on the lowest quality settings to get any sort of decent performance out of the game. Anyways, grubs are infective that have begun to bloat due to their infection taking much longer to reanimate them. They lay on the ground, playing dead, waiting for prey. Actually, can you call it playing dead if it's a zombie doing it? If you drive over a grub, it'll grab onto your vehicle, instantly grappling onto your hood. You can actually kill them while they're climbing on the front of your vehicle if you ram into something like a car or a dumpster. There's also a new variant of the mutant, the Alpha. Named that because they tended to be seen leading packs of mutants, and two alphas are never seen together in a pack. The mutants in Road of the Dead 2 have also become much more aggressive. If they miss your car, they'll just jump in front of it and try again. Mutants can also grapple onto the characters in the car, forcing you to mash either spacebore, spa space bo fuck it, I'm leaving that in, fuck you, or left mouse button to knock them off, losing control of the vehicle if the driver is grappled, or being left defenseless if the gunner is. In Road of the Dead 1, the mutants were much more of a nuisance, and could be solved with a simple press of the F key, but in the sequel they become much more of a threat. While John had bullets that would blow the skull in half, the army has bullets that do as much damage as a metal BB. Speaking of which, I've noticed a lot of people complain about the damage the guns do, and how Road of the Dead 2 has turned into a grind fest due to the emphasis on new upgrades. And honestly, I can see where they're coming from, because if you only play the Lost Guns campaign once, it can become aggravating to spend points on things that turn out to be useless. But since I've been playing this game for a while now, getting fully upgraded has been an enjoyable journey, as you have to be strategic with what you need to upgrade in order to survive. Which, by the way, pro tip, if you only plan on playing the campaign once, I would recommend upgrading Diane's Arsenal and Cochetta's M60. More on that later, though. Anyways, John's Mustang was fast as hell, which meant that after blowing past a mutant, they really couldn't catch up. With a top speed of 140 to 150 miles an hour, John blew through the city in roughly under an hour. But, the Humvee the Lost Guns use only goes about 50 miles an hour, which just isn't nearly fast enough to clear the distance between you and the mutants. A large number of buildings have been added to the random generation. Most are just set dressing for each type of zone. Residential, industrial, and town buildings are randomly generated based on what areas you're in. 
but unique buildings have been added, with different usages for each of them. Mechanic garages allow you to upgrade or repair your engine, tires, and bumper. Police stations let you upgrade or buy weapons and refill ammo. They also let you drop off civilians. Police stations and churches were both set up as last-ditch extraction zones, netting you extra RP if you extract civilians, but taking a lot of time to extract the max number of civilians. Churches let you buy med patches or steroids, allowing you to restore health or completely ignore damage from explosions. There are also weapon caches, scattered on the road with the same store as a police station. There are military vehicles scattered around the streets, which you can salvage tiny amounts of ammo from. Upgrading your weapons is a must, since the number of undead increase as you travel further west, into the areas completely overwhelmed by zombies. You can't kill zombies without damage, and without ammo upgrades you'll be stuck reloading constantly. And a lack of damage means you're wasting your ammo. Blah blah, you get it. Upgrade your guns, or you're gonna die. Speaking of upgrading guns, let's talk about the character's arsenal before we dive into the side content. Diane and Cocheta each have unique arsenals, and they're both balanced differently. Each has a pistol, a shotgun, an SMG, and a primary weapon, each of which behaves differently depending on the character it belongs to, pistols excluded. Let's start with the SMGs. Cocheta's MP5 seems to have less range, but is more accurate during longer bursts of fire, whereas Diane's Mac-10 seems to have longer range, but is significantly less accurate, making it a damn good choice for clearing mines or explosive trucks. If you put the crosshair anywhere on the screen, this gun will probably hit something. Cocheta's Spaz-12 has less damage and accuracy than Diane's Remington 870, but that makes up for it with its ammo capacity able to spit out way more lead, which makes it decent for dealing with mutants or multiple grapples in a row. For example, if you're stopped at a mechanic garage. And last, but definitely not least, their primary weapons. Cochetta wields an M60, an LMG that, when fully upgraded, can spit out lead for roughly 11 seconds straight, making it the highest capacity gun in the game, which is balanced by the fact that it can't hit shit. So, it's really good for defense, but the long reload and inaccuracy means that you could be left defenseless while trying to load the gun. Diane's M16, on the other hand, is much like its real-life counterpart, versatile and reliable. The M16 has good accuracy, great range, and it has one of, if not the, fastest reload in the game, since most other guns have an action that needs to be worked or just... This makes Diane's M16 one of the best guns for shooting enemies in front of the car, as you can end up killing mutants if you have the skill due to the insane accuracy. There are also mounted weapons that can be purchased. You can't refill their ammo, so it's a one and done thing, but they let you tear up the road in ways you couldn't otherwise. Oh, speaking of ammo, the extra ammo perk is something that is almost required to upgrade if you want your guns to be useful at all. My personal recommendation would be to fully upgrade the ammo perk and both of Diane and Cochetta's primary weapons, plus getting your car upgraded. Other than that though, most everything else would be a waste of your time if you don't plan on playing the side modes or the hardcore mode. So I'm inserting this here at the end because I realized that like I didn't really explain, so uh, here is Gamriel's strategy guide for nerds who don't play the roguelite more than once. Uh, here's a little bit of a strategy guide for all of you basically. If you don't give a shit about this then you can go ahead and skip to timestamp. So. For the main crux of the game, you're going to want to be having Cochetta be your driver and Diane as your gunner. Uh, this is because the weapons that Diane has are far more suited for us, like offensive, as it were. Whereas Cochetta's are much better for defense. When it comes to uh, strategy and what you're going to want to do uh, for your first playthrough, pick Cochetta as your driver. Now, you're going to want to make sure you get all of these upgrades at some point particularly the tires and the armor, at least, if not the engine. <clears throat> uh, though the engine will help, obviously. So, for perks, you want to make sure you go ahead and grab more ammo and faster switch. Faster tasks is another thing to dump, uh, to dump points in. Chopper assist, lower costs, and faster leveling. Don't really do a whole lot. Faster leveling does something, but yeah, don't, don't, don't bother with it. What you're going to want to do is dump your points into the more ammo and faster switch because this allows you to gather more ammo, 
Uh, and faster switch allows you to switch characters faster. At the max setting right here, uh, it switches almost as fast as switching a gun. For example, instead of... Like, let's say that I was out of ammo, or I'm stopping the car. Look at how fast the switch is. Like, in comparison to switching guns, the switch is almost as fast. Okay, so as for, as for weapons. The pistols, I would not recommend upgrading them. Uh, at all, really. The pistols give you unlimited ammo, but honestly, like, if you're smart about it, you can just pick up ammo as you go and never even have to use the pistol. Um, so what I would recommend is, first and foremost, is I would recommend, uh, buying the assault rifle and upgrading its damage and capacity. I'm full, I mean, you should fully upgrade it, as I have here. So yeah, fully upgrade the assault rifle, and the LMG you don't necessarily need accuracy, but damage and capacity are things you're going to want to definitely spec into for it, uh, considering the uh, this the, you're going to be using this on defense, so you're not going to need the most accuracy because you're going to be shooting at zombies that are going to be continually getting closer to you. Um, I would then also recommend dumping some points into the compact SMG, its damage and its capacity at least, if not its accuracy. Um, then this shotgun uh, is a good for, it's a good backup weapon. The shotgun and the pistol are both good for backup weapons, but these two I tend to use primarily uh, when I'm, when Diane is the gunner. So I would recommend uh, dumping your, dumping points into these two primarily uh, throughout the most of the game. As for Cochetta, though, aside from his LMG, I would recommend dumping points into his Assault SMG. It's fully uh, loaded up here. It's, it's, it's fully upgraded here. So, it's pretty good, but it's, um, it's, I would recommend only using it as a backup for the normal LMG, because nine times out of ten, you're going to want to, you're going to want to just use your LMG for most of the defense because once, uh, for example, like Diane is done repairing the car or gathering an upgrade, you're going to want to switch back to her where you'll then have the assault rifle and the compact SMG. Uh, mounted weapons, like I said, mostly a prestige item. Uh, I would not recommend getting the getting either of these unless you at least have your weapons up to snuff. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, my, that's my little strategy guide. For you. Road of the Dead 2 has the same challenge modes as the first game, but the names have been changed to somewhat boring versions. Dead on Time returns as Out of Time, which is a bummer. In my opinion, Dead on Time is much more clever. Police State comes back as Dead State, which I actually do kind of like. And as said before, Highway to Hell has been renamed to Hardcore Mode. There are also a few new modes. Rescue Op, Mutant Meltdown, and FUBAR have been added. With the added complexity and length in the sequel, the requirements have increased for the achievements tied to Out of Time and Dead State. In Road of the Dead, the challenge achievement was only 10 kilometers. That's been doubled now, with 20 kilometers for both Out of Time and Dead State in order to get the achievements. Out of Time now also requires one minute for its timer achievement. But the thing is, is that 20 kilometers is a long fucking distance. While it only takes about 10 minutes with a fully upgraded vehicle to get to the 10 kilometer mark, that's 10 kilometers of constant pressure. A shit ton of zombies, mutants, carpet bombings, spike strips, etc. Plus, stretches of the highway where you just can't repair anything. It's incredibly intense. Mutant Meltdown is a mode where the only enemies in the game are mutants. Yeah, it's that simple. Mutants in the story mode aren't that difficult to deal with, but in this side mode, they end up spawning in hordes at a certain point. Rescue Op shows an alternate scenario where Diane and Cocheta are extracting civilians from churches and police stations via helicopter. It has two achievements, Metal Dragon and Heaven Sent rescuing every civilian with no losses three times in a row, and saving 50 civilians before failing. Rescue Op is a little boring, since it's just sit in a helicopter and shoot zombies. It might as well be Range of the Dead 2. Fubar is another alternate scenario where Diane and Cocheta abandon their posts and become deserters. I'd presume that this scenario takes place before most of the soldiers abandon the streets, so maybe one day or even a few hours before Road of the Dead 2 would normally take place. Then again, Cochetta mentions going south. For the last time, you have to regroup with the other units. 
No way! Going south is a death sentence! We're going west, out of the city! So maybe this is an even worse scenario where the army made even worse decisions, or maybe it's the opposite. The army made better decisions. I don't know. Since the Lost Guns are marked as deserters, they have to face the same opposition as John Creaseman. Bomb squads, spike strip soldiers, and just regular infantry all make a return to try and stop Diane and Cocheta. Plus, even Hellfire 26 shows up to harass you. This mode is made even more difficult by the fact that health no longer regenerates. Meaning, if you get shot, that's permanent damage. However, the soldiers seem to go down after one shot anywhere on their body. So, as long as your shots connect, you should be fine. Okay, uh, what else is there to talk about? Now, yeah, I guess the plot. Diane and Cocheta introduce themselves to each other, and almost immediately, they begin to disagree on the best course of action. Thank you! We crashed our Humvee. I was with a Kilo 5 patrol unit. Got surrounded so fast, they... They all died. What's your name? Cocheta what? Solomon, Delta 2 unit. And you? I'm Diane. Diane Resworth. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm better. Where are we going? What's going on? We're losing control. Gotta get out of the city. No, we have to regroup with the other units. What other units? Look around you! No, we keep driving west to the edge of the city. Okay, we do it your way. And this kind of shows each character's archetype early on. Diane is someone who's been here for over a week now, following orders and doing whatever they told her to. Cochetta just arrived and can see the severity of the situation. Were you part of the flatline operation? We've been fighting these things for almost a week. No, I came in two days ago. It was pretty bad already. But it seemed like you were still in control, even this morning. Still got coherent orders and all. That's what HQ wanted you to think. This is way over their head. Doesn't make sense. I never thought we'd be overwhelmed like this. We've never fought a battle like this. It's crazy. He seems to be more aware of the severity of things, arguing with Diane about a number of things. This is something that really makes me like these characters. They're both strangers in a high-stress situation with different stances on what to do at any time. Cochetta's radio is busted, but after stopping to fix it, Diane attempts to contact HQ. Cocheta, your radio! It's busted! Would be good to have contact with our people. Can we fix it? I think so. We'll stop the car and see if you can fix it. I'll keep him away. I'm on it. Listen, I know you think we're better off by ourselves, but I'm going to contact HQ to get a clear picture. Suit yourself. HQ, this is Kilo 5 reporting. Do you copy? HQ, this is Kilo 5 reporting. Do you copy? Kilo 5, uh, go ahead. My squad is dead. I got a pickup. We need orders. We're near, uh, Burlington and Lake. Over. Um, move north to regroup. Over. Regroup where? With who? Kilo 5 to HQ. Regroup where? HQ, do you copy? Damn it! Satisfied. You wanna go north? I don't know. Then we don't. Given the same orders we hear given to everyone else, Diane and Cocheta ignore the orders to move north, continuing to drive west. The further west they go, the deeper shit they get into, as the west side of the city was overrun days ago. Mines and spike strips litter the streets, and it only gets worse the deeper you go. Motion detection mines replace the bomb squads from the first game, but this time they are so much more lethal. The timing is much more accurate now, so unless you shoot them or swerve into it, You'll take permanent damage if they go off underneath you. No regenerating health like in the first game. General Sherman finally shows up to give out the same orders he did in the first game. Attention all troops, this is General Sherman. I am taking command of this operation. We're facing an enemy like we've never seen before. But keep your heads cool, and we're gonna get through. Now follow my orders carefully. All ground personnel are to converge to a defensive line along the Ayachi River. There's just one problem. This entire time, Diane and Cocheta have been driving away from the Ayachi River. We also have reports that some zombies have mutated. 
Be aware they are very strong to be avoided at all costs. Mutated? What is he talking about? I don't know. And Yachi River is on the other side of the city. Do we turn back? No way. We'll never make it alive. Well, what do we do? We keep going west. It's our best bet. We're not that far. Whoa! Square. Isn't that where they tried to make a stand yesterday? Yeah, you're right. Look at this place. It was a massacre. What were they thinking doing this here? We lost so many people. It's just people deciding for field units. No wonder we're this deep in shit. Gojota brings up something interesting with his comment here. Now, I may be an enthusiast for all things military, but I am no expert. However, if what Cochetta says is true, then all the plans and strategy have been cooked up by non-combat units, which would explain why a lot of them come out half-baked, why holding territory turns into a bloodbath, and why in the grand scheme of things the entire operation fails. The F-16 bombers make a return. This time the army's incompetency shines when they start bombing streets that not only have units on them, but also streets that just don't seem to have any strategic importance. Dispatch to air squadron. We need a carpet bombing west of Juno Street. Affirmative. We're on our way. Whoa, shit! That's right on us! Call it off! Kilo 5 to dispatch. We're near Juno Street. Call off the carpet bombing. Dispatch! Call off the Juno Street bombing! Fuck! Here they come! Brace yourself! Like, seriously, what good would come of clearing this industrial area, or residential street? This is another example of a terrible job the army does at retaking Evans City. After losing parts of the city, they try to take it piecemeal, instead of reinforcing strongholds, or holding choke points, or, you know, just simply training the zombies around the city. I bet John pack-a-punched his gun, and now the army's stuck on round 20 with just wall guns. By the time the Lost Guns reach Middletown, also yes, I'm just gonna call the protagonist the Lost Guns, since it's faster than saying Diane and Cochetta. Anyways, by the time they reach Middletown, a familiar face, or I guess nose... Cochetta, a chopper! Hellfire 26 to Humvee, do you copy? It's Hellfire 26! The bastard, who was non-stop harassing John, is now here to assist the Lost Guns, lighting up vehicles, zombies, and most importantly, mutants. Yes, we copy! This is Kilo 5, can you help us? What the hell are you doing out here? We're supposed to regroup at the Ayachi River! We're going west, can you help us or not? West side is completely overrun! Going further is suicide! There's a transport operation on Highway 65 right now. Can you make it there? We'll try. There's a highway ramp a couple kilometers ahead. Can you give us air support? Only for a little while. I got a rendezvous with the highway troops ASAP. Thank you so much. Hold on tight. It's going to be rough. You're going straight to a hot zone. I'll help you as much as I can. It lets the two know that they can still make exfiltration out of the city if they can get to the highway. But we all know what's going on at the highway right now. The transition from the streets to the highway is pretty cool, even if the ramp sprite looks a little bit fucked up. Entering the highway and... Oh god, what is that? Alright, let's find us a transport out of here! So, yeah, for some reason, the track titled The Highway is so fucking compressed inside the game itself that it's not just hard to hear, it's hard to even listen to. Especially when you're coming off of a banger like Together in Hell. I actually went and bought the OST off of Bandcamp, because every single game in the series, excluding maybe Range, is full of bangers. So yeah, I'll be replacing this compressed version of The Highway with a much higher quality for the sake of this footage, because it's actually a pretty damn good song. The checkpoint you hit as soon as you enter the highway is called Downtown, with the next one being Chinatown and then Brighton Square. These checkpoints are the exact same checkpoints from the first game. Also returning from the first game is... Yeehaw! Smile, baby! Whoa, check out this jacked up car! <laughs> He's crazy! But he's still alive! This is pretty much the only interaction that the three protagonists have between each other. And even then, it's one-sided, since this interaction isn't in the first game. However, the voice line used here is actually a line for a hood grapple pistol kill in Road of the Dead 1. 
This interaction kind of reminds me how every Half-Life protagonist has some kind of interaction with each other in the first game, like Adrian and Gordon or Barney and Gordon. My favorite take on it is actually the Freeman's mind and its derivatives, because some of the interactions between those characters is kind of hysterical. You work here, right? I seriously need to ask you something. Yeah, what? What is the deal with electrified toxic waste? With the electrified what? I mean, w w what possible use could you people have for radioactive sludge that's been electrified? Radioactive what? Oh, that! Oh, I think I heard one of the scientists talking about that last month. I think it's one of the ingredients in Red Bull. I fucking knew it! Particularly Adrian and Barney. Anyways, I don't know how I managed to bring up Half-Life in this fucking video, but it happened, so eat your heart out, fans of my Entropy Zero video. The highway is an especially tough part of the game. Since there's no way to restore health or repair your car, you have to make it about three miles before you can repair or heal. Which is especially tough on hardcore, since upgrading after death isn't an option. With John's rampage on the highway causing most of the soldiers on the highway to move north or fall to the undead, there's no transports left on the highway, all being rerouted to the Ayachi River. But where are the damn transports? The lost guns are left with no hope as Cocheta puts two and two together and figures out that the army is planning to nuke the city. Dispatch, send all transport choppers to the Ayachi River bank. We're evacuating the area. Yes, sir. Phantom Eagle, what is your position? Phantom Eagle to base, I'm currently at 64.7 and 32.4, heading to 79, over. Roger that, 19 turret go, over. Shit! You know what that means? What? They're gonna nuke the city! No way. We probably don't have much time. 20 minutes stops. At this speed, we're not gonna make it to the tunnel. We're not gonna make it anywhere. Then what, huh? What? I don't know! This is probably a good moment to stop and talk about the voice acting. As I said, we would get to it later, and now is that later. Every single voice actor in these games gives it their all. It's quite incredible, from just the individual soldiers... Alpha 7 to base! We're facing a massive crowd of undead here! We're holding, but we might have to pull back if more show up! Maintain your position! They're dead and slow for Christ's sake! Just kill them all! They're hard to kill, sir! Just do your job! Yes, sir! To the civilians... Sit in the back! Thanks! You're amazing! John and the Lost Guns... Every single performance made by these incredibly talented individuals is fucking fantastic. Yes, even you, Twink Soldier. Here he comes! These people actually gave a shit and it shows. Cocheta makes the decision to get off the highway, this time heading east through Northside Park, a last ditch effort to try and make it out before the bomb drops. Delta 2 to Hellfire 26, do copy. He can't help us! Delta 2 to Hellfire 26, come in! What are you doing? He's gone! Delta 2 to HQ, come in! We're way too deep in enemy territory! Let's get out of the highway! Why? Delta 2 to HQ, come in! Why, Cochita? Because we're going east through Northside Park. We'll find another transport. There has to be a chopper in range. Getting off the highway, and finally, Cocheta manages to reach someone at HQ. Demanding a pickup, but is only met with being put on hold. HQ answer, goddammit! What? Who's this? Delta 2, we need a pickup near Northside Park. What do you want me to do? Send a pickup, you moron! Please hold! By the time we get to Northside Park, the Alpha Mutants have started to show up, which means we get to deal with twice the number of mutants as normal. There's absolutely no hope for the Lost Guns, as everyone they seem to talk to is confused and unable to assist in any way. This is HQ. Hello? Send us a pickup, please! We're in Northside Park! I... I don't think I can help you. Then get somebody who can! 
closest chopper we've got is 20 miles away. What are you gonna do? Touch me through now! Uh, yes, sir. Oh, thank God! God has nothing to do with this. I'm reloading! Finally able to get in contact with a chopper, and it turns out to be Flyboy 1. The exact hey. chopper that General Sherman is on. This is Flyboy 1, do you copy? We need to pick up immediately! We're in Northside Park! We're currently flying away from your location, but hold your ground for 30 minutes, soldier. Our transport will rendezvous with- Don't get me your bullshit routine! Who is this? This is General Sherman. What's your name? Fuck you! That's my name! You're gonna nuke the city, you son of a bitch! Cocheta, no! Yes, I am, Cocheta. We lost control of the city and we don't have a choice. We're here! We're alive! Get us out of here! Where are you exactly? We just got out of Northside Park by the East Gate! I don't think we can reach you in time and land in a hot zone! Yes, you can! We tried to you! You fly to us! We meet in the middle! Fairview Mall's main parking lot! Come on! Are your medals and pins worth anything, sir? Or are you the biggest coward I've ever met in my life? You've got heart, son. I'll give you that. Okay. Alright. Let's do it. But we're not gonna wait for you. If you're not there in five minutes, we're flying out. We'll be there, and you better be too. Over! We have to take as many shortcuts as we can, or we're not gonna make it. We'll make it, Diane! Sherman to Cochita. We've landed in... We're not alone! When you're not cruising around, get your ass over here! We're almost there! Wait for us, sir! God damn it! We'll wait as long as we can! Hurry up! Over! You made it! Step in and cover the west side! Finally making it to Extract, and the Lost Guns have to cover the chopper while it gets repaired for takeoff. What's the problem? Something's wrong Talk with the move at the same time, son! It's the hydraulic system, sir! Gotta check the pressure relief valves! What's going on? We're stuck on the ground! And this is really where I discovered my love of Diane's arsenal. The M60 that Cocheta offers is good, but the slow reload definitely kills its reliability in the long run. I found the M16 to be much more reliable than the M60 in terms of its automatic primaries. It's working, sir! We're taking off! Go, go, go! Head north! Away from the impact point! Finally taking off, the game decides to crash, so we have to do this section all over again. Oh my god, it fucking crashed again. Yeah, like I said, the performance is not great with Road of the Dead 2. But, redoing that whole segment on a fresh reboot of the new Grounds player, and... Go, go, go! Head north! Away from the impact point! Brace yourselves! Detonation confirmed. What's the status on the undead activity? Radiations are still too high, sir. Status CTA, 10 seconds. Let's pray to whoever's still up there that we did the right thing. No! Sir, we see a lot of undead movement. Shit! It didn't work! It didn't work! But we failed, son. To all military personnel, this is General Sherman. We're transferring all our communications to secure channels. Complete your current orders and report directly to your superiors. Follow the chain of command and we will prevail. Godspeed. Sherman out. Prevail? What the fuck are you talking about? Hope is the best I can give them right now. You son of a bitch! Let go! Fine. Sherman to Prescott. Do you copy? Prescott, come in! Sherman HQ! Sir, we're being overrun! Mitch, hold that door! We're not gonna last much- Hold that door! Mitch, fuck! Ah! 
Sherman to transport unit one. What is your position? Sherman to any transport. Come in! You really think they had time? You sacrificed them all for nothing. Sherman to Powell. Do you copy? Damn. Can't reach any of the other cities. This is happening in other cities? Sherman to Casper. Come in. General. I lost contact with most of my men. We have a downtown crowd coming east and an army coming west from Sonoya. And massive fire is raging through the city. Jackson, five heads, nine o'clock. Seems like a great time to get the hell out of here, sir. What are your orders? Full retreat. Save your men, now. Yes, sir. Come on, come on. We're moving out. Outbreak started all over the country. Cities were cut off. Media blackouts put in place. It hit us so fast in so many places, we spread too thin. It was all on a need-to-know basis. Now HQ's gone. We're scattered. Pulaski, how much fuel we got? About 450 miles, sir. Can't you contact more people? I had my people down the chain of command. HQ had theirs. We're cut off now. Casper is my only remaining unit. I want to fly north, meet with them outside of Alliance. A small town we could scout, take back if need be, fortify and defend. What do you say, boys? Yes, sir! Is it a good plan, ma'am? I... I think so. Yeah. Cochino, you with me? Yeah. Casper, get out of the city and head north. Get your men to the outskirts of Alliance. We're flying to you. Yes, sir. We'll be there. It's not over, people. When you beat the Lost Guns campaign, you unlock Hardcore Mode, FUBAR, Rescue Mission, and Mutant Meltdown. But, more importantly, you unlock John Creaseman's Mustang as an alternate vehicle. From what I can tell, the Mustang actually does have some gameplay differences, not just cosmetic. For example, the Mustang is a lot faster, but can't stop as fast as the Humvee. I think the Mustang may also have a lower health threshold for both the bumper and engine, but don't quote me on that because I really haven't tested it extensively enough. Hardcore mode in Road of the Dead 2, as stated previously, can only be beaten deathless, which makes the campaign 10 times more intense and engaging. For example, I entered the highway section of the game with the maximum damage to the engine and had to strategically maneuver my way through the shit show that is all of the cars and fences on the road, dealing with mutants and hyper-focusing just to find one pixel of a water barrel to keep my car from exploding. I also finally managed to repair the car to full HP, on. only for the game to crash two minutes later. Uh... Whoa, what's here. with the I'll lag? Yeah, and I'll shoot these four. No! God damn it. Oh my fucking god. I do adore hardcore mode, because the balance does feel really well thought out, with all the mechanics established and slowly mastered while playing the main campaign, and maybe some of the side modes. Hardcore mode feels like the ultimate test, since each time a mechanic is introduced, it's required that you master it, since the sections that the mechanics are introduced in often throw a lot of it at you. For example, traps or alpha mutants. Since the game forces you to master the avoidance of motion detection mines, if you just stumble your way through the game like I did on my first playthrough, chances are you're going to have a bad time, since the checkpoint that introduces motion mines throws so fucking many mines and spike strips at you that it is really easy to blow up and die early into the area. The highway areas force you to master swerving and health management since there's no actual way to buy health patches, steroids, or repair your vehicle. There's no garages on a highway. The section where alphas are introduced is probably the section that I would say teaches ammo management the most and reinforces the idea of upgrading your weapons since prematurely reloading weapons, or 
Having a lack of damage is incredibly prevalent, as mutants often travel in packs of three to four, making it almost constant onslaught of mutants, which means you have to manage your ammo, the mutants, and the hazards on the road. Of course, everything that I just said is null and void. You can't even beat the game on one run anymore. I had to do some serious testing, and I've come to the conclusion that as far as Road of the Dead 2 is concerned, Anything above version 1.0.3 of the Newgrounds Flash Player ends up being unplayable, as the FPS drops dramatically around Middletown, and only gets worse as you get on the highway. But 1.0.3 just crashes due to the lack of memory. So 1.0.5 and above is generally better as it doesn't crash, but 1.0.3 is just objectively better for Road of the Dead 2, since you can actually play the game on that version. So, with that being said, this essentially means that right now, it is impossible to 100% the game. On a slightly more positive note, Road of the Dead 2 has a fully-fledged campaign builder, which, on top of everything else, really solidifies to me that Road of the Dead 2 is actually the most ambitious Flash game of all time. And yes, I'll die on this hill. The only other game that I've heard of that has a level editor is... Super Smash Bros. Fucking what was the maker? What was the Mario maker? I don't remember. There was some Mario maker game. I am winging this one. Fuck you. Alright, let's wrap this up. The Saga of the Dead games hold up really well, with some definite caveats. I'd have to say that while Road of the Dead 2 is still amazing and has been preserved well enough, it suffers from some huge issues. Instability and crashing plague this game. I did some extensive testing, and the newer versions of the new ground player don't exactly play nice with Road of the Dead 2 in particular, dropping frames constantly around Middletown but the older versions tend to crash after long periods of time. So, regardless, I don't think it's possible to beat the hardcore mode, or even make it to the 20 kilometer mark. Which is a huge bummer, since I really wanted the 100% Road of the Dead 2 for this video. So as far as I'm concerned, these achievements are impossible right now. I will probably end up making up a follow-up, where I make an honest attempt to beat hardcore mode and some of these other challenges, but right now, that's something that's not possible. At least, for me. I would love to be proven otherwise, though. Evil Dog has stated that they do in fact have plans for more games in the saga, including what seems to be an RTS named Streets of the Dead that may or may not be cancelled. I can't find any news on it after th 2017. There's absolutely zero evidence that a new saga of the Dead game is in works currently. However, I'm choosing to believe that Evil Dog is going to make Road of the Dead 3 at some point, since he seems to be getting acquainted in Unity with his newest game. They rule the night. So, here's hoping. Personally, I have entertained the idea of remaking the games in Unity, and it's a project that I would love to attempt if I can get the time. So, uh, yeah, Evil Dog, if you're watching this, hit me up. Or maybe I'll hit you up? I don't know, I should probably learn more Unity first. Make a proof of concept and shit. Anyways, uh, thanks for making the saga, and sorry I talked shit about Lab and Range. I'd like to thank you for making it to the end of this video essay. Wait, what defines a video essay? Hmm, advances an argument... Uh, I don't think I had an argument. Fuck, how do I formulate an argument again? Um, okay, let's go with... The Road of the Dead games are masterpieces, and some of the most technically impressive pieces of Flash media ever created. I don't know, who fucking cares? I just wanted to ramble about some of my favorite Flash games of all time, and I used the word video and essay in combination to trick all of you into watching this. And the funny part is, it probably worked, because I know what you are. Anyways, for reals this time, I'm not making another long-form video essay for a while. In fact, you're gonna be lucky if you get bits and bytes every few months, since I'm gonna be taking a little break from almost everything in order to make enough money to move across the country. Which, speaking of, if you want to support me, I do have memberships turned on for the channel, plus a secret channel in the Discord where you can show your support. Link to the Discord server will be in the description. Thank all of you for the support over the past few months, and farewell, for now.